So um, this is what I've done is, I've, you guys should see two TVs up here. Uh, the one on my left is the teacher's version. So that's what it sort of looks like. Oh, someone joined. Who is that? SPU285. Huh? Awesome. All right, so we've got a student. Are there any other students? We just register the students. We have to register the students. If you did the great, you can join 106. If not, then it's, it's cool. Um, just, just a little side story. You guys see how it says ST153? When IT team first developed this, um, you know, they're Korean, so they didn't really know uh, the best way to write students. So they actually chose a three letter word that ends with a different letter other than you. I'll let you guys guess. <laughs> Oh, there's 284 Chongdam. Who's Chongdam? Okay, so we got four students. That's good. Five? I don't know who's this going to handle, but uh, okay, so we got, we got five. Now, um, the one on my left is a student. Okay, is uh, this one over here, CDA3, uh, Hakusen 2, student 2. Uh, does anybody want to try a student? Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, what was your name? He is? Okay, so. Um, these, every, any, any mistake that you make will be uh, magnified on the big screen. <laughs> <laughs> um, and does anyone want to be uh, 153? This is just sort of on your. Okay, so just uh, hand back over. So you guys are all students uh, in my classroom, and then we're just going to go through just the basic functions. The point of this is just to show you guys what the C, uh, CSFT is capable of, how you guys actually use it in the classroom. That's what training is for. So when will you use a certain function, why would you use a certain function here, which component, stuff like that. Whoa! Okay. So let me go ahead and uh, start this class over here. Five students need the textbook. So I'm sending uh, my textbook to five students. So if a student hasn't downloaded a uh, textbook to their class, now they should have, all of them should have, but in the case that they don't, this is sort of uh, how it works. Now you will not have to do this every class. When they get their tab, they should already have all the lessons downloaded to them. So okay. chunk out keeps logging in. So what? All right, so let's just do those things for now. Okay, uh, just so we can... <laughs> I think um, maybe some of you guys have uh, registered as the same ID, and it only allows one register of one ID, so uh, someone is trying to, I guess, overwrite someone else's uh, status. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start the lecture. So, uh, the TS screen's over here. This is what the students look like, and this is what the teachers look like. The first thing I want to show you guys is the... Alright, so, I'm not going to lecture you. I'm going to turn it on log out. So, if you turn it on, please try not log in. Okay. Um, if you guys look over here, I'm, let me just stand over here. The first thing I want to show you guys is the scroll bar over here. So, naturally, when we're using a tab, we might want to just scroll on the screen now. What happens is it starts to, starts to write. I'm going to keep saying no. <laughs> so, what we have to do if we want to navigate our tab is on the right, or sorry, my right hand side, there's a scroll bar over here. Let me actually go to a page that actually allows scroll. So, you can actually just drag up and Now it's also divided into sections where it says one and two. You guys can actually just jump from section to section depending on what section uh, you want to be. And then the last one is the quick navigation, which is over here on the very lower uh, right hand corner. It just lets you quick nav to other pages. Now, as you can see, Matisse's uh, screen is synced with mine which means that he cannot look at any other page. Okay. So whatever page I'm on, he should be looking at. Now we can actually you know, release this, and I'll show you guys a little bit later, but that's basic navigation. 
that's how you guys will be navigating through your textbooks and how it responds on the students' tab. Now let's go through the tools. Aha! This is great. So let's say that uh, Matisse is doing something else. He's not paying attention to class. Um, or you just want all students to look at the teacher. So you, as you can see over here, one student has actually exited the tab. Uh, you see that orange circle that says one? It says that one student is not even looking at the tab. Because uh, Matisse, if you press the home button, the big button over here, it actually leaves it, it leaves the tab, uh, the, the what number? Uh, yes, that one. So he's actually left the tab. What I can do is I can press eyes on the teacher and bring him right back. <laughs> so what can you guys sort of see this function being useful for? Student management, distractions. Also, discussions, right? When you want to have discussions, when you want to focus. Okay, guys, I want you guys to look, you know, for example, I want you guys to look at right, this over here. Okay, and let's talk about this. Let's look at your choices. Just focus on me, focus on me, and then you just release it. And there's also the eraser function. So, um, a lot of times you guys are going to go and you guys are going to annotate. You might want to circle a few things, do this and that, okay, underline a few things, and then you want to get rid of it, and you just push eraser. Now I'm always thinking, well, where's the undo function, right? Or where's the erase certain parts function? That is a function that is being developed. That is a function that, no, honestly, uh, throughout the first term, the instructors, they felt that they needed it. So on the second iteration of the CSLP, this is a function that they will hopefully into uh, the application. But for now, you can just erase everything that you wrote. <laughs> now, even if I write something, and I go page, and then I go back, it should just be. <coughs> now, everyone's like, how do I prep? How do I prep for class? And I'll show you guys um, just a few unique ways that you guys can prep Class. Also, if you guys notice, you guys see this, uh, this segment, uh, segment implementation guide? That's sort of like your class guide, the printouts that you guys can take into class as well. It has screenshots of each component. So if you guys need to prep, you guys can that on that. But there are different ways that you can prep on that as well. I'll show you guys. Dual screen function. So um, let's say that I want to do some uh, comprehension questions. And, um, Comprehension questions. I said, okay, Matisse, I want you to go ahead and do uh, one of two. He's already done it. He's such a good student. But let's say, uh, can you press the dual screen function, which is the very top icon? What this does is this opens up the comprehension questions and swipe across the pages, uh, across the top page. And this can actually go to the other passes. This is great for scanning questions. This is how they're able to answer the scan questions and at the same time refer to another page. So this is what dual screen is used for. For the teacher's dual screen, this is great for justification. So, oops. Okay, so I'm a teacher and I want to uh, do dual screen. Let's see. Okay, so number one, why did you put number one? I want you guys to all look at this passage over here. Where is answer number one? Where did you find it? It's over here, blah, blah, blah. Great job. Here's justification. Okay. And this is what the teacher's dual screen is. So you have the student's dual screen as well as the teacher's dual screen. Now, hopefully, um, as I'm going through these functions, I'm going through fairly quickly because of time. Hopefully, you guys are sort of thinking about you know, how can I use this in the classroom for whatever section. <coughs> nope. Teacher and back to class. And the last one is show answer. So if you guys uh, see this little light bulb, okay, uh, only the teacher has a light bulb for uh, obvious reasons. I can go ahead and show the answer. So go 
going to different sections, shows the different answers for different sections. So those are the basic tools. Four little uh, icons of that. So the answer key is built in to the tablet. Hopefully you can sort of see this as a way to prep more effectively versus, hey, I got the answer. You can just go in and show answer. Oh, that's the answer, right? And so hopefully we're not doing that. But is the audio player. So uh, listening point. is a very big part of the C1 program and the C2 program uh, module. Sorry. Okay, so what I when you see it up there is a little audio track. You press it, it pops up this audio player. This is what you're going to Oh. Okay, so students can play this audio player. A uh, part of the class is actually independent listening, where they're going to be using earphones and uh, writing in their answers. But for the first part, only teachers are going to be using it. So a play button, of course. Last time, we discussed CCTV in the UK. When we talked about why any of you And this is great when you guys see the peaks. This is where you guys see you know, the pauses, the verbal cues, and stuff like that. So this is great for knowing where to fast forward. And the great thing is that you can actually Three use the wheel. Unfortunately, it doesn't scratch. This was a, <laughs> this is a function that was requested, but you can just see the need for it. And, but, uh, you guys can fast forward that way, or you guys can. For the autocratic society, okay. present, but that battery press is yeah. an easy yeah. matter to do that specific on your team. So you guys can use that as well. So these are just very simple controls. A great way to do this, uh, another great way to do uh, as a part of your prep, is to use the bookmark function. So let's say, for example, you want to bookmark certain places where uh, you want to stop and pause. Okay, so you go to where you want to go, see this little bookmark button, and next to the X, you press it, pops up a bookmark. So that's where you know, uh, so that's like, a, what do you call it, where you write down the tracks, that's basically what it is. Okay. So you go right here, you can uh, bookmark other places. Uh, now what might be... I guess, a problem if you bookmark everything beforehand. Students will see it. As soon as no, they're like, okay, I just need to listen for where that bookmark is and write down the answer. Okay, write down the verbal cue. Uh, there are a couple ways around this. Um, the first one, the one that I like to do is actually like to just bookmark as I play the track so that when I go to the review, I can just go to where the bookmarks are. Okay, but other instructors, they bookmark it and then they do something like this. Last time, we discussed the CCTV in the UK. Make sure you guys don't have Facebook notifications and stuff like that because I'm not this year. But that's one thing. Also, another thing is still screen. Covers the bookmarks. So those are all different ways that you can use different functions to, I guess, prep more effectively. But that is one, that, those are two of the more popular ways to get around this bookmark issue. Because the TV is constantly on and it's always available for the students to see, that's one way we can get around it. Ah, student response system. Make sure that I am okay on time. So the student response system, uh, as I was talking before, it's about you know, responsive. When students do something, it live updates, right? Just like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, let's see this, uh, right here. Uh, can you guys go to number one and uh, touch it with your finger? Uh, the, the little blank part, number one. Oh, let me turn off the. Uh, actually, let, let, me, uh, let me go to um, reading. This is a great part to use the SRS. Here, right here. Basic ideas. Just, can you guys uh, just click that box? Okay, and it should pop that up, and then just type in an answer. So if you guys are students, just go ahead and type an answer, and then press um, confirm right over here. And what you'll see is every time they confirm, you'll see students' responses come up on the teacher's screen. On the ST, uh, ST1 and 3 is submitted. Anyone else? I think there are like four students in my class, right? There's like five. So let's see some more responses. You guys can write anything. Not vulgar. Please. Okay, so we got two more students that need to respond. Let's, it's okay. So they can respond, you know, whatever. But let's say, oh, 
I want to look at the answer. So I press the arrow and I say, okay, so those are your responses for all the students. Now, um, what might be an issue for this? If all the students can see every student's answers. Right, the shy students. So what we have is we have a show real name function. I'll go over this later, where it just randomizes and gives them Obama, Yuri, Gandhi, and Gold. So these are random names distributed to the students, just to hide their, just so that they can be anonymous. Every time you do it, I believe it should uh, change them, but. Uh, <coughs> And those are the real students. There are different ways to view this. You can view this in a list. Okay? You can also view this in a tile format where it shows up like this. Okay? From this tile format, you can make it even bigger. So if you have a response that you really, really want to show to class, okay? you can just go and boom, show it up. You can scroll and you can, oops, sorry. You can go from different responses. And then you can also again turn on the show real name. Another great uh, function is this, and this is something that. So there's this thing called a mini project, and there's this thing called a drawing media curve. We'll talk about this a little bit later, but this is another uh, response. So all of you guys should have. Uh, if you're students, you guys should have pictures. Do you guys have? Do you guys see this picture? Uh, can you guys actually just draw on the picture? Just draw whatever you guys want, and then submit the results. So the mini project is find you know, the criminal. Who's the, who's the criminal? Okay. And why do you think this person is <laughs> And then press submit when you're done. When you're done, press submit. <laughs> So this is another great part of the SRS group where you're doing this and then, okay, let's view your results. Bam, 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 all of your students' drawings show up right over here and then you can use this to talk about it. Like, why did you draw a star on the ceiling, right? Uh, why, why, did you, why did you draw a star? Someone else drew a star. But yeah, like, why did you choose these people? What about these people, you know, makes them criminal? So that's another part of the way um, that we can use the response system. Very, very uh, fun. Uh, I don't know uh, another way to uh, say it, but the students really enjoy the student response system and teachers really enjoy utilizing it effectively. And of course, you can see good ways and not so good ways to implement it, where it's probably the best and where it's probably uh, not too good. It is a full part of the CSLP. Let's go to the next part. Media cards. So media cards uh, is going to be a very big part of your preparation. Now, the curriculum marketing team, they have provided media cards for us. All these media cards that you guys see over here, and these are all media cards that have been provided for them, so uh, for you guys. So you guys can use that to supplement your class. However, let's say you want to make a, your own media card because every teacher has different students and they want to make a media card that's more tailored to their students and you guys can just do that as well. So let me just go ahead and quickly just go to a random page and I want to make a media card over here. So I hold down and you are and you see it pop, pops up. Click that, and then I can go make the media card. So I want to make this image card, and I want to take from my gallery, and I will take this uh, picture of the group of cartoon characters, and then I will so select the area that I want to use this media card. Save it. So there's my media card. On the back, I want to write, hi. I want to write a message of what is this media card. It's just for purpose, and then hi. Confirm, save, boom, there's your new media card right over here. 
Now what I can do is I can say, okay guys, you guys really like this media card, I really think it will help you for your homework or for any review, I can go ahead and transmit to you guys, and then it transmits directly to the student's tab, and it saves in their media gallery. So you guys can utilize media cards. Now you guys are sort of thinking, okay, so what can I do? You guys can take web links, you guys can take photos. Okay? Just be aware of, um, you just, I don't know, just generally be aware of like copyrights and stuff like that. Um, currently, right now, uh, video cards are disabled um, for the purposes of copyright, but we do have embedded video cards from the, the CM team that will be embedded for every lesson. But you guys can also make quiz cards. For example, if you want to make a multiple choice card, and at a part of your lesson, you want to throw out a multiple choice question to see what the student's responses are, just make your card beforehand, save it, you can send it to the student and have just a mini pop quiz. You make the student the results, you guys can discuss it, you guys can send it to your students, so on and so forth. So media cards are very, uh, I mean, I keep saying this, right, but every function that we have really benefits you when you guys are trying to prepare for a class and find the most effective way of delivering this content. Then, uh, U-modes. Very, very simple. Okay. So if you guys look over here in the uh, very upper right, you see orange, that's page view. Okay. Um, this is fun, but very dangerous. It's called live draw. I activate live draw, and I want you guys, as students, to write on the tab, whatever you guys want. And this is not me. These are your students. And whatever you guys students do, shows up directly on the TV screen. Half of you are thinking, wow, this is great. Half of you are thinking, oh my god. <laughs> Right, everyone has that one student in their mind who you know that can ruin this. <laughs> so be very careful about how you use my job. The good thing is that when they mark, it shows you who does it. And I can say, okay, who wrote this part? I want to see who wrote this part. Drew this part. There you go, STU 285. So you guys can see exactly who's writing what. But again, just think about, you know, how you guys can use this effectively and how it might not be so effective. <laughs> the last one is quiz. So this is when you want to use just an impromptu quiz. Um, so you say, okay, I want to just throw out a poll. And uh, you just throw out a verbal quiz and say, do you guys vote yes or do you guys vote no? Choose your answer and respond. And we will see what the class thinks about this issue, for example. That is Korean. Yeah. yeah. This is the student's tab. Oh. Yeah, why, why is it in Korean? Because it's developed in Korean. I think it, it should be English too, right? It should be English, because I think that we're using a test version for this. Are your tabs, is it in Korean as well? Yes. Yeah. Everyone's tabs? <laughs> Or in the tab, I don't know if it affects this. It doesn't affect that. Yeah, I don't think it affects this. <laughs> so we have the responses, and then we can see yes, 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 and then no. Another uh, quick thing here, what we can do is we can do just a drawing quiz. So before we, it was the quiz in form of media card, now we can actually say, okay, I want you guys to. <coughs> draw something. So you choose an area of your screen and you have them just draw something, submit it, and you can see the drawings as before. Sorry, I'm running a little bit behind the, uh, behind the time, so I'll go through these first. So let me just go to the next one. Almost done. Okay. Um, this is the last one. Last one, and it has the most functions. But let's just quickly go over it. It's called the dashboard. So off the screen, you guys will see this uh, button up here. This is called the dashboard. So off the screen, you guys will see this button up here. This pops up the dashboard. This just provides additional functions. So, third is CTP. I know it's <laughs> one of the hardest parts of class is getting students to groups that they are all happy with. Okay, it seems like it's one of the most possible things to do. So, 
instead of putting the burden on the teacher, let's put the burden on the tab so that they, they can't say anything. So here are your groups. You have three groups, and here are your groups. Go! And those are your groups. Okay. So it's a very easy way to randomize groups. Another one is pick one. So let's just say you have a hard time getting students to participate, for example. You say, okay, I want one person to answer. That's 285, what's the answer? I can convince the instructor. So the instructor is also on the list. Which one? I don't know. These are all additional tools. That being said, it should not be overused, right? You shouldn't be using this for every question. Even though you want it. A word badge is pretty fun. So let's just say uh, one of your students did a really great job. Student 285, I want to award a badge. So you hold down on their name, which badge, and I am going to choose the Indian because everybody chooses the Indian. Right. The Indian, and the Indian gets sent to, to actually, let me give it to, uh, which one are you? I think uh, Matisse is the one who's going to there. Yeah. I want to give you an Indian as well, so it actually goes to the student. Which means that, very important, because which means that when the student goes home to review the materials, they can say, hey, this is where I got a badge for doing a very good job. Just on that, just on the stage. If I go here, I just Okay, what's well, that be said? Do not overuse this, right? Badges will accumulate. The more you can give it to them. Okay, so I don't want a huge list of badges <laughs> to make it meaningless, right? Um, so some of the other functions, let me just go, go over uh, just some functions here. Start presentation. This is where we're going to do a presentation. Um, they can actually send you a screenshot so that when they're up presenting, they can actually use your TV to uh, give their presentation. <laughs> open web and image. If you want to open a web page or an image, you guys can use that. Okay. Image, I usually just do in the form of a media card, but it's really up here. Oh, just, um, just be aware that if you guys do open image, it opens up the gallery, which means that if you have Google+, Facebook, all that fun stuff synced to your tablet, right? Your wild nights on Friday, Saturday, those pictures, they will show up on your tab, right? So please be aware of that. Yeah. Um, so just, just, yeah, just keep that in mind. And then the last one, uh, a couple ones. Show timer. This actually, just, it's just a timer function. Oops. If you want to, uh, you know, just have, Give them a specific time to do something. You have three minutes to do these responses. There's a timer. Go. Unfortunately, it only counts up for now. It doesn't count down. And the last one is pen options. So here you can choose what pen color. Maybe you want to choose a highlighter instead. You guys can choose different colors. I know I didn't really have so much time to go over the student side. Okay, but I do want to show you guys this. See the synchronized pages? A lot of times you guys say, okay, you guys have group work, and you guys are going to have to refer to different pages. You can click that. Pages are not synchronized. So now, um, Matthias, you can go from different, so uh, go to a different page, actually. So, uh, yeah, you can actually, Matthias, you can go from different pages to pages, and it is not synced to <coughs> Now once I re-click that, he's going to be back to nothing. So those are the, uh, just the general functions of the CSLP. I know I went through it very quickly, I wish I had a little bit more time. Uh, 
During training, when you guys are going through training that for the next two weeks, okay, you guys will be utilizing these functions and seeing where you know where you should be, you, you should be utilizing this function versus where you shouldn't be. Okay. Um, let me just quickly go over the training schedule before I let you guys go. So here you go. I don't know if this is uh, a little bit hard to see. This PPT, guys, will be uploaded on um, the training website. Raise your hand if you guys have access to that website where you guys see the, the modules and whatnot. Okay, raise your guys' hands if you don't have access to it. I have sent a link to all of your branch managers, so they should have it. Okay? If not, your HI or whoever's in charge of you know, responding to those emails, they should have it. But I will, again, resend it to your branch managers. Please ask them. It has all the training content and videos. We have it. Honestly, guys, at the end of this meeting, I'm going back and working on these videos right, to upload for you guys. I'll make sure that you guys see how the certain components are done through the methodology. So today was this, uh, the introduction workshop. Hopefully you guys were able to preview some of the components, look at some of the segment guides. I know some of you guys have printed them out, which is great. So what I'm going to do today, or at the latest tomorrow, I'm going to upload uh, component methodology videos for C1 Part 1. This is the components that you guys will be simulating in your training sessions on your first day. Most of you guys should have, uh, have RSVP. Uh, I think we have just a few like Thursday, Friday sessions, afternoon sessions open. If you guys aren't, I noticed that there are some people in Seoul who are in the morning sessions. If it is possible for you guys to go down to the afternoon, because it ends at 2 o'clock now, I noticed that you guys need more time. So at the end of 2, uh, that would be really appreciated to make more room for people in, in the morning. Otherwise, we have to figure something out. Um, but anyways, this is the general schedule. You look at the segment guides, you look at the components that need to be uh, learned. I would really recommend you guys go and practice this with your instructors. Anything else such as starting class, downloading books, those tutorials, I will upload to the website for you guys. So you guys are clear on that. There's also those manuals that you guys can refer to. And you guys can, again, always email uh, training at training.com directly. I am checking on reading, uh, responding as quickly as possible. So if you guys have any issues, please let us know. Okay. So you guys will be just reviewing those components. And then you guys will be simulating and just being good with people. Honestly, guys, it's going to be very, uh, I think we all recognize you guys as excellent instructors. It's just going to be getting used to the CSLP. That's going to be the core focus of this. Uh, what you guys will need, you guys will need Galaxy 8.0 tabs. Raise your hand if you guys don't have, have not received them from your location yet. You guys uh, must have that before uh, you guys train. So if you guys don't have them, please email me and then I will talk to your location. Or um, I think that uh, you guys have all uh, checked in over there, right? Received or have not received. I'll be emailing your location to make sure you guys have them. And you guys should have a smart classroom set up. Um, to study, access to the online training, I will send, resend that link out to your branch manager so you guys have access to everything. That contains everything such as the most updated schedule. Uh, it will have a video of this workshop as well as the PPT for this workshop, uh, all the segment guides, all the uh, segment implementation guides, everything like that. And then for simulation, you guys must bring your 8.0 tabs. Uh, we do have a few extra, but we do not have enough to supply everyone, obviously. Um, and then the most that you guys are going to get out of this training, the more you know about the components beforehand, the more you will get out. And that is to say, uh, if you come here and you have absolutely no knowledge, you guys will still pick it up just through reviewing it and coming up to see it a few times. But the more you study the methodology, the more you look at the videos, and the more you practice with your instructors, you guys will be a lot more prepared to um, get more out of the training sessions. Do you guys have any other questions? Okay, uh, thank you guys for coming. I hope this was useful and uh, we'll see you guys next week.